We're right here in... <laughs> and life is so much happier. She's really lovely. When Alden builds something, they just put the best equipment on everything. This is a yachty boat. Yeah, and I like it. Very PBB. <laughs> this is so cool. Lovely, lovely. Boom, boom. Hi there, this is Captain Q. Join us as we travel hither and yon to show you some great deals on some really interesting boats and maybe learn just a little bit with each one. Randy, here we are. There's Newport, Rhode Island, right over there. The home of the, probably the yachting world capital of the United States. Maybe the world, it's the best. And it's a gorgeous, gorgeous place. You notice there's, they've cleared out the harbor for us today. That's nice. And uh, where are we gonna head to? I think we should head straight due north up Narragansett Bay and find safe harbor yacht storage area. Can we do that now? Uh, we could. You want me to go first? <laughs> sure. You're here somewhere. Ah, there you are. Sea Dog and I had to check out my new knee pads. Nice. Three months later, I finally got them out of the car. <laughs> and life is so much happier. I mean, I'm kneeling down on crushed uh, shells down here. I should be bleeding from every part of my knees, but I'm not. I've got my knee pads. So I'm really ready to go to work today. Are you ready to go to work? I'm ready, yeah. All right. Tell me what we've got. What we got here today is a 1984 Alden 44-footer. She was designed by Nils Hilberg, who's an associate of Alden yacht. This isn't pure old style Alden. This is kind of the new style boat. She's really lovely. She's beautifully done with all grip, kind of a royal blue, an interesting two-tone uh, boot top here. And the gold cove stripe up here is also all grip too. That's very nice. Uh, some people actually do that in gold leaf. I don't think that's gold leaf, but all grips gold is as good as gold leaf. Now this is an IOR period boat. And if you look along the side, you're going to see some tumble home on it right here. Uh, not really extreme. It's kind of full bellied. Um, and uh, there's just not a lot of distortion under the hull either from, from forward aft. She has a, uh, a, a short keel here. And it has a, a relatively long root cord to it. Uh, and what that means is that this is going to track very nicely. Uh, on, on one hand, uh, what it will also tell you too that this boat may not be designed for snapping itself around buoys, okay? You would need a shorter, uh, shorter root cord up there with a, a, deeper, a deeper fin. I'd still race it if I wanted to. I'd just plan a little bit ahead. Instead of turning on a dime, you probably turn on a quarter. So maybe even 50 cents, <laughs> but that's going to do the job. Now that also has a centerboard in it. She's drawing right now about four feet, uh, eight inches. With the centerboard down, she'll draw eight foot, uh, 11 inches, I think it is. The centerboard is a positively buoyant foil shaped and it's operated by a hydraulic system. We have a little bit of a run back from the keel uh, to the big skeg back here with a relatively new MarTech prop. I think that was put on in 2001. And look at the size of that rudder. You're going to steer this thing in any kind of sea going downwind, upwind, whatever. Huge barn door for it. There's nothing, nothing short change there. This is a 18 inch max prop feathering. Uh, it's in really nice condition. Uh, and there's a zinc on the end, which is probably ought to be replaced. That's just getting iffy. Uh, but the stainless shaft looks in great shape. And I mean, I'm not going to try and no <laughs> move play. it. But no play for this guy, not easy play anyway. Everything is sound here. There's no signs of leakage or weepage here. How would you see weepage? Oh, you could see something coming out of, out of the shaft. Might, maybe some grease where a bearing or a seal is let go and uh, you're seeing some water drip down or even below. But, uh, and that would discolor or? It would discolor, yes. Uh, but I, I, it'd be pretty obvious, I think. I think she's, uh, she's gonna be lovely. I can't wait till we get up on board. Can we do that now? Uh, we could. You want me to go first? <laughs> sure. Okay, here we go. You made it up. You made it up through the hole there. Oh, there you are. 
Someday, I guarantee you, we're actually gonna find a boat in the water uh, with a mast in and without the uh, the sunshade, the giant white sunshade on. <laughs> won't that be nice? That'll be amazing. And we'll be warm. There's a number of little things I like about this boat, and you won't be surprised at any of them, I know, because there's slight shadows and reminiscent of the PB. Yep. We have a control center here, a hydraulic control center for the boom vang and the hydraulic backstay. Right here, right behind me, is a, is a drum with a hydraulic line going to it. And down here, I can take this handle and I can pump that up any way I want to, okay, to get as much pressure or bend in the mass that I want. Uh, likewise, I can switch a, a, a dial over here and, and then operate the hydraulic boom vang, which goes from the bottom of the boom to the lower part of the mast. And that will control the height of the boom as the sail is let out. You know, we, we've had the same sort of thing on PB. Yep. Um, it's just really a great arrangement. When Alden builds something, they just put the best equipment on everything. Uh, and Alden, Alden uh, yachts are right up there with Hinkley and uh, Morris and uh, uh, you name it, all the top swan, all those things, in terms of the construction and the following that it has in the boating world. They're just beautiful boats. Somebody sort of referred to them one time, I've heard, it's sort of a blue blazer boat, meaning that if you're a, a New England yachtsman, you would have your blue blazer on, you'd be standing behind the wheel and uh, driving her, you know, hard over the waves uh, with your tie on and so forth. You'll notice on many boats when you see people racing on their boats, uh, they can't quite see over the dodger or they can't see up the, the uh, slot between the main and the jenny. So they always go sit on the rail and the rails are usually about that wide and you end up with rail butt at the end of the day. day. I don't know if that's an official term, but it feels like it. Uh, but sitting here, this is as comfortable a spot as any on the boat. It's perfectly contoured, uh, for my butt anyway, and uh, I could sit here all day. I've got a little backrest here, part of the bimini. I can use that and just sit here comfortably and sail the boat right along. Just, just have a great time. As I sit here, there's one on the other side, so if you decide to go the other direction, you can just jump over on the other side. Directly below uh, that seat are all the engine controls the gauges and so forth for the Yanmar diesel. And the Yanmar diesel is relatively new. It was put in in 2001. Nice elk covered, remember our elk covered wheels Ow. here. These are the best thing because it, it's just always comfortable for your hand no matter how cold or how wet. We're in a, a, a nice cockpit. We've seen divided cockpits before. Divided but, meaning? Well, divided in that the helmsman is back here by himself. Remember we were on a Cal 40 and that had a, a, a tiller on it and the helmsman sat up there and the crew kind of work behind him. On this boat, uh, the crew's all in front of you. All the big winches are right here. That's not plastic, that's real wood with um, an amazing number of coats of varnish on it. Beautifully, beautifully done. Yeah, these covers are really nice too. And the covers are very nice, aren't they? Aren't yeah. they very nice? So we're back here, we've got a helmsman's cockpit back here with a nice little bump in the middle that uh, allows you to even be sitting down here, nice and low, if you don't want to get right up on this pad here. So you've got one, two, three different positions to drive this boat. The cockpit is, is, is nicely covered in teak and uh, it's bunged, it's been, it's been uh, the teak's been set in here from, from above. You can see all the bungs and where the screws go in. Uh, none appear to be lifting. Uh, the teak is, is a little tired, but it's, it's very good. Uh, it looks like they've scrubbed it carefully over the years. One thing with teak is you don't want to scrub back and forth with the grain, you'll just eat it right up. We have nice uh, little spaces to store the winch handles, uh, and they're nicely uh, turned out with a nice stainless little surround here. And notice I can get around the wheel uh, reasonably carefully. <laughs> just a lot of sheets and lines and anchor lines, and I can't see the bottom of this locker. Uh, I, I see a looks like a ladder below shining up at me. So there's a, a swimming ladder available and that's on the port side. And on the starboard side, we're gonna have much the same thing. Sometimes we lose the storage, don't we? Yep. Where does it go? Uh, to people's legs? Yes, <laughs> quarterbirds, right? Sure. This is, this is controlling the main sheet right here, okay? And what they've done, is the main sheet, as you can see up on the boom above, uh, is uh, hanged on, is, is, it's got two bales on the boom with a set of, of uh, four-part lines coming down 
to this winch right here, which is a self-tailing variant, and you can control the thing right there. That means that there's going to be no main sheet flopping through the cockpit trying to knock somebody out. That now, sounds familiar. Yes, it is familiar. <laughs> it's not a happy thing. Here's one of the things I really like about this boat. This is so cool. This is another companionway. You probably noticed the companionway of the cockpit. All boats have those for the most part. But here's a midship's companionway for the crew to go down. It's just really neat. It kind of gives it a really nice big boat feel. The paint is all good. Uh, the white, uh, the white against the tan. We like this combination. It's very soft, and it's not too abrasive. Um, I might like just a hair more tooth, but that's pretty good. You're not going to go anywhere on that. <clears throat> We've got a derayed box here. And uh, with two 12-volt uh, uh, plugs, probably for spotlights up here, maybe to help find buoys and things. Here's the Dodger. Uh, it pops right up for you, so you can leave that open. It has a nice spray hood. And uh, in, the, in the older boats, in the olden days, this is all we had. Yep. You know, you'd come up from below and, and you'd, you'd stand underneath this thing. and Just enough for one head. One guy. Yeah, one guy. Oh, the side decks are great. Look, how, look, look I'm kneeling. Uh, with you know the full length of my longer. I don't know how long this is. This is 30 inches probably. Here's a little item. I bet you don't know what that's for. I'll bet you a dollar. So I would mount a pole on that to put up a preventer pole? Yeah, well that's not quite the right phrase, but it's close. We'll call it a reaching strut. Ah. A reaching strut. When you set a spinnaker, and here's a spinnaker pole right here. It shoots up. Now you're starting to bring the boat up to windward a little bit, you know, instead of having running dead downwind. And that pole moves slides forward and sits about where it's sitting right now. You might carry that right up by the head stay. Now when you do that, the guy, which is one of the, the lines that trims the spinnaker, is going to come up and it's going to lay up against these shrouds. And it will saw back and forth, kind of like, kind of like that, right? So you put a reaching strut in, which pops in here, and it goes out and it sits and it pushes that guy off the shroud and it's got a little shiv right in the end of it so it runs freely. It's really nice to fly spinnakers, real spinnakers, and I don't know if they do anymore or not, but I would. And when they pop open, it's the most beautiful thing in the world to see this giant uh, spinnaker open up in front of you. I mean, it really is, it's exhilarating. Here's a life raft. If it's a six-man raft and you've got eight on board, uh, two guys are gonna have to pound sand. <laughs> Uh, anyway, and they've got, help. <laughs> right. and what they've done here too, they put a little plate over the top of this, which is nice uh, so you can stand on this. You don't want to be standing on this raft. And there is a, an anchor storage. This is designed, uh, just take a look at this, it's kind of cool. Uh, it's designed for a Danforth anchor. You see it's got a place for the two uh, wings on the Danforth to sit in here. Here's a place for your, your cutter rig staysail to snap on right there. Really nice windlass with the uh, cat down here. and going right down to the chain locker and a nice uh, piece of raw teak here to take the chain as it comes up on deck. A uh, couple of nice hoss holes here, hoss pieces uh, done in stainless, all part of the stem head fitting. So they they replaced all the rigging. This is all updated rigging and it's wire, one by 19 wire, which uh, the nice thing about this, if it's going to fail, you can feel it. You can run your hand down it and I'm not feeling anything right now, but if one of these little strands breaks, it'll stand out and it will just catch your hand. A good way to do it actually is with a glove. Yeah. Go down a cotton glove or something, slide it up and down, check it, and see if there's any breaks in it. So if one of them breaks, the whole system's not gonna fail. But if that solid rod rigging breaks, it's one break yep. and that lets go and quite possibly your, your mass might go. So they replaced all that. There's very little woodwork on deck, except there are wood handrails, and they're nicely, they've got a little canvas cover for them right here, and uh, uh, see that down the line here, uh, and those are, those are really nice. That's all been re-varnished recently, I think in the last two years or so, all the varnish on the boat was, was redone. That's it up here. I mean, there's just two, there's handrails and a couple of little pads on top of the derayed boxes but not a lot of work up here. Shall we go below? Yeah, I want to see how this looks. Okay. Let's do it. Uh, you've just come below into this sumptuous uh, saloon we have here. Uh, all this varnish down here, every piece of it, has all been redone in the last, I think it was the last three years or so. And it's just gorgeous. And the woodwork is gorgeous. It's like, uh, it's, just, it's the same as, 
Hinkley or anybody you want to find out there. Um, as far as fit and finish, uh, choice of woods, mostly teak down here, uh, varnished, and uh, it's just wonderful. I'm sitting on an L-shaped settee. Uh, sort of there's a pilot berth behind me, a nice narrow one, and I say nice narrow one in that this is going to be a great place to sleep when you're underway. You're not going to get tossed around. Lots of nice locker storage with nice bronze uh, hasp everywhere and catches. Uh, lots of storage. This whole sea berth underneath here, is, or a pilot berth, is going to be all storage under here. And there's tanks under each of these of these berths that add up to about 160 gallons of water on board in two separate tanks. She also carries 80 gallons of fuel. Look how nice it is. It's just not overdone. There's no extra little cutesy trim. Uh, you got a little mast in the way here, but that's okay. You can pick who you're talking to. <laughs> <laughs> and there's little holes here in the table all along. And you know what those are for? Little fiddle mounts, right? You got it. And it'll hold the fiddle right in there. So if you are eating and the boat's moving around a little bit, your whole plate won't hit you in the stomach. And that's just a nicely finished place to put some silverware. Or, uh, could be a little liquor locker down in there, why not? And look at the finish on here. It's, it's yeah. furniture finish. And that's the top of it. And that's the bottom of it. <laughs> you can't even tell. No, no. I can put it in upside down, but I won't. So, two big opening ports right here. I've got the same thing on my side. Port and starboard. And there are two hatches overhead. Uh, one each side. So ventilation is not going to be an issue on this boat. The uh, the overhead is nicely finished with a so I think that's a Naga piece I'm seeing up there, uh, which yep. will be easy to wipe down and and keep tidy, with nice uh, teak strip trim. So it finishes off the whole effect in here. We're just sort of surrounded by wood. What is that for? Probably a lee cloth. A lee cloth, exactly. And the lee cloth is going to be parked underneath this pilot berth. There's another nice drawer at the end of this table. And that's kind of an interesting thing. When you see something like that, you kind of wonder, what are they thinking with that? We'll ask our viewers, why is this little drawer have this nice velvet padding in it? What are we, what are we, what are we taking care of? I'm stepping right into the forepeak. There's nothing in between. There's no head here or anything. And uh, we have a really spacious V-berth area here. Great big full-size berth. And we got storage under here, all unhinged. I like this uh, rattan uh, for ventilation. Well, it is nice, it's very nice, good point. And look at the finish on here. This is so smooth. It's just like glass. A nice bureau here, and a little uh, little night table for the, for the berths up here. Beautifully done uh, drawers. All this has been varnished. Do you realize what it would cost oh to God. varnish the entire boat? Fanny up and kick it over. Whoa, is this easy, huh? This is the easiest one yet. Ah. Now, I would like to have a cushion for my head. Ah. Oh, oh, I shouldn't have done this. <laughs> Lights out. This is a great, a great area. Put the kids up here. Uh, there's no head for the kids to use up here, but they don't need the head up here. Isn't that clever that I can walk around both sides of the table? One thing good too is that you're never out of reach of something to hold on to or to lodge your, or lodge your body against, you know, so. Yeah, I noticed these big grab rails over in the oh, yeah, cabin gi top. Giant grab rails on either side here. Plus the fact you've got the mast here. You're, you're, you're not going to bounce around inside this boat. Also, you can kind of wedge your thigh against a lot of the stuff here, yeah, right? Yeah, exactly. I can, I can hang in there and I'm, I'm, so, I'm not going anywhere. It's really great. And here's our midship's companionway. Don't we love that? I love that. It's so cool to have a midship's companionway. Yeah. This is a real sailor's galley. Now, uh, I've seen some people talk about giant spaciousness of, of, uh, of, of work areas and so forth. This has all the same thing in different little locations. And there's always one thing you can add too, which, which we had on the PB. Anytime you need extra space, we had, for example, a, a, a little panel that folded down here, and you could fold that right up. Suddenly you've got another two square feet of preparation room. Remember we had uh, yeah. the sinks on this side, yep. and over on this side. What did we have on this side? Had the stove and the ice box. Yes, we had, we had a, 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 the big ice chest below. Actually, this is even better. And this has got a granite uh, refrigeration system in it. And up here, oh, stuff you need a glass of milk or, or beer or orange juice or drinks or something. Just open this puppy up and you've got a really nice 
uh, upper chest here with a door. Look at the thickness on this thing too. And oh, we have something chilling here. Oh, it comes with. It comes with one of our favorite brands on the PB. <laughs> now this is not Dom Perignon, as you recognize right off the bat. Yeah. It's far more reasonably priced at your local grocery store or- It's more like uh, Tom Perignon. Mm, yes, it could be. <laughs> Yes, it could be. Uh, but this stuff is great, and we used to carry this by the case on uh, on the PB. I definitely hauled some cases down the dock. And the wonderful thing about it is it's tasty, it's fun. It's more fun to drink this after a race than just another old beer. And the other thing is that for some reason, no matter how much we consumed, nobody had a hangover. Don't ask me why. Here, you're, you're right in here. You're not going to move around. And if, if the boat's healing over to to, uh, uh, to starboard, your lawn's like this, and if you're over the other way, then you can, you know, keep an eye on things. It's really good. We have more stories not good for food. Oh, oh. Well, we, this is obviously another good sailor here. Yep. Fine choice. Between the Denny Moore and the Frisian Net, I mean... You've got both bases covered. <laughs> you're, you're totally covered. Your crew will be really happy. I think those are two of the major food groups, right? They are two of the ma major food groups. They absolutely are. And I have to say, these are also the biggest sinks we've seen. Two of these. You could do your laundry in these puppies. And look at the cabin sole. It's just, you can comb your hair in it. Lovely, lovely. Are you ready to go a little I, further? I'm ready. Stay with me. This is, you can call it the owner's cabin. Uh, you can also call it the navigator space. Uh, you can call it just a really neat place to be. There's another companionway here. This takes you right up to the cockpit. You can see right up there. You can get it right out to the helm. This is a quarter berth, if you will, but look at the width of it. Now, it doesn't stay that wide all the way back, but it, it doesn't narrow too much. And this is really big enough for, for two uh, adults to sleep in. Look at the width of This is going to be half a Captain Q or something. <laughs> Whatever you want to call that. It's just big. I mean, it really is. It's, it's really big. And your pillow will stay up there. I'd put another little piece up here to catch a pillow on this end. Um, and they've put a step in here. You see, somebody's put a step there just to make it even easier to get up into that berth. Nice set of drawers. A nice set of chest of drawers here. Oh, with lots of good stuff in there. <laughs> Hopefully you get all that good stuff when you buy the boat. See this little tiny locker? What do you think's in there? Oh. Probably EPIRB. Look at that. Your flares. Ah. Okay, the boat's in distress. You want to, you know, want to get somebody's attention. Where are the flares? People put them down in the lockers. They, they hide them, uh, basically. They're right there. That is the flare safety locker. Nowhere else. It's nice and dry. It's convenient. Now, I'm going to sit down. We've got the Captain Q measuring stick coming in to the nav station. This is the biggest chart table we've seen so far, I think. Next to the, next to the expedition schooner. Really large. Everything you need to to uh, navigate and get someplace. It's right here. But I love this. How do you like how it fits? I think it fits fine because I'm really locked in here pretty well. But I'm gonna walk by right here. I'm walking by two little uh, two little plaques here. There's 86. So two years this boat's made it down. Uh, she got second place here and over here she got second place. She's been consistent. So that's pretty darn good for the Bermuda Ocean Race. I've just opened up this after hatch. We're now sitting and looking at the engine. That engine <laughs> that was put in there in uh, 2001, I think. But it looks like it's been sitting in the owner's living room. It's just really great shape. Look at the shaft here. Look at this stainless shaft on the boat. And what a sweet uh, bilge. Does that oh, work for yeah. you? Yeah, yep. Sweet bilge. And the, the, the deck is all teak and holly, but it's not, it doesn't have the teak and holly plywood. This is, this is a solid peak piece of teak and holly, not just something laminated onto another piece of plywood. Wow. So very nicely done. Follow me in here. And this is the only head on the boat. Uh, and it's convenient. You can get to it from the uh, forward cabin here where I'm standing right now. It has a giant grate on the floor. And uh, some people say, oh, gee, I wish I really had a separate stall shower. Well, this, if you look above here, you'll see a place where there's a curtain rod. Yep. And the curtain rod addresses uh, the sink and the head. So it keeps them basically pretty dry. And you shower out here in the middle area. And uh, it's like having, but look at the size of it. It's big. It's really a big spot in here. Yeah. So this is, this is wonderful. So a nice sink. Good storage behind it, as always, and a, a big showering area. Mm -hmm. 
I was really happy to see this boat today, uh, just to see if she was what it looked like in the pictures to me. Uh, and she was in excellent shape. She's been freshly painted outside, freshly varnished inside. I really like the boat a lot, and uh, gee, it would be no problem to hop aboard that and just take off and, and do some serious cruising with a little racing thrown in too, it would be fun. And that boat's been to Bermuda twice, and she sailed the San Francisco Bay, and just in very good condition. There's so many good things about it, everything, everything about it. I like the after cabin, I like the chart table and the, the large quarter berth and the master cabin, and, and the, the location of the galley was pure PB. And that, that V-berth cabin, when you take that extra extra head out of the out of the front of the boat that people like to stick in, look how much more room there was in in the uh, in the in the V-berth. That's it. That's no, it's it, not. It's not it. Uh, I have a question. Yes. What is your question? Um, how would you rate this boat? For mm. me? This is a tough one because remember, this is the Captain Q rating. Does Captain Q really love this boat? Would he love to have it? Would he? Yeah, I like it a lot. She's a ten. We know the ten. She's definitely a ten. She's a floater. She's been around. Uh, on top of that, the fact that she's so close to being a uh, little sister to the PB, she's got to get a 20, and I'm going to throw just a little cherry on top, a 21 uh, for this boat. This is really a neat boat. I found nothing wrong with it, and I think she would splash down and take off without a lot of work and a lot of trouble. If you like what you see, please hit the subscribe button. And if you want to be notified when the next one comes out, please hit the alert bell. And that's not desperate at all. So we're having too good a time doing these things, so uh, you can hit the bell or not. Randy, how would I ever find out what's coming up next? Uh, you can follow us on Instagram here yeah. or Facebook here. We'll have little previews of what's coming up on our next episodes a little bit early. That's pretty cool, previews. You all join me. I'm going to Instagram right now and I'm going to find out what's coming up next week. Thank you very much. You know, Instagram's not a place. <laughs> <laughs>